Thanks Thank so you, much, Wendy. Bill. Um, you can still hear me, right? I can. Good. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, I apologize in advance. I seem to have a little frog in my throat this morning. So if I sound hoarse, um, it's just that. Um, I'm going to uh, have sort of an informal uh, presentation with you today. And the, uh, what I'd like to do and like you to walk away with is an understanding of when you have to make a presentation or write a paper or perhaps write a book and you have some data that you'd like to display in some sort, uh, uh, you're going to probably want to make some sign of graph. And most people who aren't familiar with this topic in, in any depth, they, they know how to make two or three or four kinds of graph from Excel or something. So they make those and they're impressed with their own graph because it's pretty and it has pretty colors in it. And they think, wow, I've really done a good job. Well, what I hope to do today is to uh, really expand your mindset about that and show you what kinds of things you should be doing uh, with your graphs. Um, they aren't all the same. So the, the, I'm going to talk uh, a different amount uh, about these topics, but uh, we'll talk about why we use visualizations at all. So we're talking here about data, so showing data in some sort of visual form. Um, uh, how you can make it tell a story. We're going to talk a lot about different kinds of graph types. Uh, not all of them, of course, is a whole lot more than we can cover in this uh, amount of time, but we'll, we'll discuss that. We'll discuss color and uh, the importance and, uh, of color and uh, things you should think about, uh, about complexity in graphs, uh, the effect of uh, the media that you're going to use on what, how you choose a graph. Uh, we'll just mention interactive visualization, visualizations for a while and talk a little bit about software that can do this for you. We're with you. If I can figure out how to change the slide. There we go. So let's say that you're trying to uh, uh, make a presentation. So you're a project manager and uh, you want to convince somebody of something and you have a group of people together and you have some data and the data is going to prove your point or help justify what you're doing or perhaps present some sort of uh, status. Well, in the upper left hand corner of this uh, slide, you can see a table of the data. And if you put that on the slide, everybody's going to go to sleep or, or throw spitballs at you or whatever. And even if they don't, it's very difficult to tell um, what the story is behind that data when it's in a form like that. So uh, a common thing to do is to turn it into a bar chart. So down at the uh, bottom part of the slide, we can see that data charted. And when it's charted, you can see very easily the one year there, or I guess this is monthly data, the one month where, although we had a really good sales month, we lost money. So that might be worth investigating. So the chart here tells a story that's much better than the bunch of numbers. So we can do lots of charts. Uh, that frog in my throat seems to have jumped onto the slide. Uh, at least some of them have. But uh, if you read USA Today or papers like that, um, you'll frequently see cutesy little charts here. Uh, the, the one on the upper left here is trying to show uh, how many frogs they counted in this pond uh, in May and December. And, and they're showing it by the size of the frog. So they're just showing a single image and the size of the image is related to how many frogs they found. And that's okay for, for an approximate display. Um, a better one is the one on the right where we use each frog to represent uh, a certain number. And so now we can tell more. We can tell that there are three times as many frogs in September as there were in May. Um, it's still hard to tell uh, with any precision what they mean. So the first bar graph on the lower left here uh, uh, shows exactly how many frogs there were. So now we know there were about 11 in May and 38 or so in September. So that's much better. Um, but we want to, uh, we have a nefarious purpose in making our uh, presentation here. We want people to think that frogs really increased because we spent a bunch of money to get the frogs to increase and we want people to, sh to think that we were successful. So the, the middle bar chart here is the same as the left hand one, but if you notice the bottom is at 10. So we've cut off the bottom of the chart. Uh, and by doing so, we're not lying 
uh, because the top of the bar is still means the same thing. It still says we have 12 uh, in May and 38 or so in September, but people aren't don't tend to look at that. They're going to look at the relative sizes of those charts and say, wow, in September we had 10 times as many frogs as we did in May. So they're going to get a, a misleading idea. Uh, any politician who produces data and shows it to the world, um, unless they are scrupulously honest, does stuff like this to, uh, to not technically lie, but to give you an impression that meets with the uh, story that they want to tell. And that's a very unethical thing to do, but it's done all the time by newspapers, magazines, and especially politicians. However, if we're talking about uh, statisticians, it's just the opposite. A good ethical statistician wants you to know a lot. So the final bar chart here uh, has has the, the, the origin at zero again. And it looks like the first one, but you can see there are little lines up at the top of both of them. And those are called uh, uh, confidence intervals. So we didn't go out to the pond and take a great big uh, net and scoop every frog out of the pond and count them and then throw them back or maybe eat them if you like frogs. Uh, what we did is we took a sampling and we tried to estimate how many frogs are in the pond based on our sample. And when we do that, we don't care. We don't really want people to know what our sample was, we want to know how many are in the pond. And so that has to be estimated. And these little bars give you a range of how many are in the pond based on uh, what we actually counted. So this is this is the, the most precise, the most realistic, and the most honest way of presenting this data. So there's a lot of ways that you can take the same data and do things with it depending on your, uh, your goals. Uh, this is a complicated slide, uh, so I don't expect you to uh, 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 to uh, read it and study it. Uh, but if you can get the copy of these slides, uh, which if if our host isn't willing to send this out, I certainly am. Uh, this uh, this is a guide for what kind of chart you could you should use uh, based on what you're trying to show. So in the center, it says what do you want to show, and there are four options. I want to show I want to compare things at the top. At the bottom, I want to show the composition of things, right? How many of what kind of stuff uh, we have. On the left, I want to show relationships between things, right? Does thing one cause thing two, that sort of thing. And on the right, I want to show distributions of things. Uh, how many people of each age do we have in our, in our company, say? So based on what the, 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 that high level description of what you're trying to do, it points you to a number of charts that are appropriate to that. You can, as you can see, in some cases, this breaks down into a tree. So if you look at the comparison one, if we want to compare among items, and I only have two of them, the best chart to use is the one on the far left. Hi there. I hope you enjoyed that last clip. My name is Michael Maloudis, and if you'd like to watch the full 60 minutes of that last webcast, while also gaining complete unlimited access to our entire library of IT learning, simply visit our subscribe page at greatpro.org slash subscribe. Unlimited annual access is $199 per year, but if you use the coupon code learn to earn you can drop that membership fee to just $149. That's less than $13 per month for unlimited access to over a thousand hours of on-demand career development, covering the entire spectrum of IT management best practices, including business analysis and requirements, software development, quality and testing, risk management, process improvement, project management, and even digital transformation. But your membership doesn't just give you unlimited access to our vast learning library. You also get free access to our mobile app, as well as direct access to our network of over 300 of the world's leading IT consultants, all of whom are dedicated to putting practical knowledge at your fingertips so that you can learn more and earn more. I hope you will join me in becoming a member of the great IT professional and advancing your career with us. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit that subscribe button above so that you get notified whenever we publish new free webcasts each week of the year. Thank you for your time and best wishes for your continued success.